we're able to be on our way to heaven. Amen? I want to say it's good to have uh, Brother Tom Jarvis with us this morning. And it's good to have our regulars. Amen, each of you. And uh, there's others. Sister Pauline, uh, I can't remember what my wife said. Uh, headache. Uh, but let's pray for her, for God to touch her and minister to her. And uh, each of you. Amen. All right. Do we have any requests that need to be made known this morning? Brother McQueen? Okay. Pray for Bill. Amen. Anyone else? Andrew uh, Chase? Uh, Marissa's sister-in-law, Abby, is pregnant. She's due in December, and she was coughing so much this past weekend that she had some sort of complications. It's, it, whatever it is, it, it's causing her to contract way early, so we okay. pray for her. Mm. Pray for Abby? Yeah. yeah. Abby. All right. Amen. Amen. Also, Marissa's having surgery tomorrow. Sounds like gallbladder yeah. surgery. Oh, Let's pray for her. Uh, amen. Sister Smith. Let's, uh, please pray for Anastasia's protection. Amen. And that God will work it out if, um, if his will, if, if Mark will not get saved, that he'll work it out where he stops taking her. Amen. He doesn't seem to like her, so I ask him tomorrow, why does he take her since he doesn't seem to care for her? Let's pray for that whole situation, the whole family. Yes. That God will intervene and undergird. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of people that uh, just in the last couple of weeks, there have been several people come to church that, uh, as far as I know, don't have an experience with the Lord. And uh, let's just trust and, and believe God to do a work. Uh, Brother Tyler made a good stab at being faithful, and they've got another vehicle, and there's something I'm sure, or he would be here. But well, please, let's hold him up in prayer. I mean, it's not uh, it's not convenient uh, to the flesh to to make an about face and surrender to the Lord. I mean, the devil throws things at you that you don't expect, and uh, you just got to be faithful to serve God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we got to realize that we as a church are an example of what we need to be. Uh, you know, that uh, there's things that I can't even share behind the pulpit open uh, to go out in the media that uh, uh, the church is dealing with. Not our church, but churches as a whole are dealing with. And I'm letting you know uh, the devil is coming after the church. So you just need to be aware of it. Yes. And you got to make sure that you're doing God's part to be faithful on your end and keeping your heart and your attitude right. Uh, uh, God knows the need and God knows what he's trying to do. And it's my heartbeat to help people get to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's my desire. My desire is not to, not to have uh, uh, Charlie's military going on. My heartbeat and desire is to try to follow the Lord in fearfulness Amen. and trembling. And be pleasing to him yes. so that we can be the example that would draw men unto him. Amen. Amen. He said, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Amen. And I mean, the devil doesn't cease to uh, uh, try to distract and hinder. I mean, uh, if I didn't shake your hand, uh, I'll do it later, Lord willing. Okay. Amen. Amen. And, uh, it's going to be okay. Uh, God's going to help us. But I do want you to know Jesus is coming. And he behooves yes. us to be ready. And I know you know that. But uh, we need to pray for one another. Brother uh, Nick. I thank the Lord for the church. I have a pastor appreciation coming up soon. A lot of people understand how important nowadays to have a pastor. Mm -hmm. We have a pastor that loves the Lord. Yeah. Hears God. Ways constantly. Mm -hmm. And we have to be truly thankful for him. Yes, yeah. amen. Amen. Why don't you stand? Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Let me ask you, 
whatever burden is upon your heart, whatever need, whatever that would trouble you, whatever you're wrestling with, I ask you to submit it to the Lord, yes. surrender it to God, yes. and let God have his way in your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because God is wanting to work, and uh, yes, he he's is. looking for yielded vessels that he can work in and through. Amen? Yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we just love you Lord, today. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. We pray yes, for all you've done and all you're doing. We take the blood, God, and Lord, over each heart and life, and over each family and you know, every situation, Lord. And, oh, God, we ask you to help us to be faithful to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for all you're doing. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord for all you're doing. God, for what you've done and for what you're going to do, Lord. I realize today, God, that each yep. of us had to work out our own salvation, Lord, with fearfulness and trembling, Lord. But I that pray, God, that you would give us hearts that are completely surrendered to you, that we'll follow and obey, and God, we'll, we'll be pleased to surrender our all to you, Lord, today. Have you heard every request and every need. You see every life, God, Have please accomplish what only you can accomplish, Lord. And we'll praise you and thank you for it. Thank In Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, amen, all right. Uh, thank you, Tommy's going to come uh, lead us in some singing. And, and let's just get a song book and let's just worship the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
money that kept me going all the time. Amen. The victory that he gave me over the things that I used to do. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious
when we all get to heaven.
mom raised her mother. She was raising her three younger brothers. And uh, uh, I guess her youngest brother, uh, she shared with me yesterday, had a lot of difficulty and a lot of things. She never opened up to me like she did yesterday. And he's been in and out of prison and there's a lot of problems. And it's over drugs. And it's over confusion. And it's over listening to the devil's lies. Mom. That's what it's about. Yes. And I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. He seeks to steal, kill, and destroy yes. what he does. the child of God. That's what he and does. anything he can do to hurt you or to hurt our Lord, that's his goal. Amen. And uh, we've got we've to gotta not give him place, give no place to the devil, resist him. Amen. Amen. And we're going to win. And it'd be good if... if uh, uh, you know, everybody uh, is going to be happy over there. Everybody that's over there is going to be happy. Amen. But when we all get to heaven, it sounds so good. But there's going to be a requirement to get to heaven. And it's yes, going to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Living a life that is a life of sacrifice. Taking up your cross daily yes, and yes. walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. Resisting the devil. Resisting the devil's lies. When the devil says the pastor don't like you, he's a liar. Amen. You can count on it. Yes, sir. He's a liar. And uh, what do you what do you mean by that, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you. I don't know how he's trying to lie to you, but I know he's trying to lie to me. And if he's trying to lie to me, after all these years, I can guarantee you he's going to be trying to lie to you. And if he's not trying to lie to you, it may be because you're no threat to his kingdom. And I'm not saying that to be catty or curt or, or mean or nothing. I'm just trying to say don't just assume that it is going to be all right. right. Amen. Yeah. Every man's ways, the Bible says, are right in his own eyes. But the Lord tried, the Lord weighed the heart. Yeah. Amen. To see whether we've got the markings of the Lord Jesus Christ in yeah. our life. Amen. 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 All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to come to you this time this morning. Good to have, amen, each of you back. Good to have Brother Daniel and Sister Erica back. And, and again, good to have uh, Brother Jarvis with us this morning. And each of you be back with Tammy and Tommy, my sister and brother-in-law. I just love them. And uh, thank the Lord for them being willing to be with us today. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you. House today. As we take up this offering. We want to put this back into your hands, Lord. May you multiply this money. Use it in a very mighty way for all the ministries and use it for this church as well. In Jesus' name we pray.
and thank the Lord you look so nice. So let's just thank let's you. just reach out and touch it. <laughs> Amen. As he's passing by. All right, that'll be all musicians. Let me testify before you I love you. Today, I thank you for everything you've done for me. You know, I was thinking about that song, Victory in Jesus. And uh, it was talking about, you know, we needed a healing. Yes. And some people need a healing right. in their bodies today, you know. But then it said, He come and heals my broken spirit. Yes. You know, some people have a broken spirit. Right. And that broken spirit needs healing too. And I thank God because he's in every faucet of our lives. Yes. Whether it be physical, spiritual, financial, okay. whatever it is, God is mindful of everything. Yes, and yes. I praise him for it today. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. If you've got your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, to the book of uh, John, St. John chapter 7. In verse 38 and 39. <laughs> Let's start reading in verse 37. I'm sorry, verse 37. I'm actually, a, a, I meant to write down 37b. But that's all right. We'll read verse 37 and 38 and 39. Amen. And I chose for a title today, Am I Thirsty? Am I Thirsty? Uh, thirsty for what, Pastor? Well, thirsty for the Lord. Thirsty for a move of God. Thirsty for uh, God to help me to be an overcomer. Not just so that I'll just... Uh, uh, be able to have all the toys and everything, but so I will be able to hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You know, when, when I come to God, I was in trouble, and I didn't halfway come to God. Come on. But I gave him every bit of the trouble, yes, every sir. bit of the junk, every bit of the disarray and the broken yes. dreams and, and pieces of the puzzle. And I'm telling you, God heals, just like Sister Tammy said. Amen. All right. Verse 37 of chapter uh, 7 of St. John. It says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You know, there's a Spirit that God can deal with us and help us with today. Amen. And that Spirit is the Spirit of God. Yes. It's the heartbeat of God, the, the you know the unity of the of, of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. They're they're not in competing with one another. They're not in competition, but they are in one mind, in one accord, as they are doing the will of the Father. Jesus, when He came, He said, "I can of my own self do nothing, mm -hmm. as I hear I judge, and my judgment is just, yes. because I seek not my own will." But the will of him that sent me. Yes. And, uh, you know, I don't know how mature, I don't know how deep you are in your experience and your relationship with the Lord. But I challenge you today to examine your walk with God. Yes. And instead of just finding fault with others, well, he's got too many guidelines and, and he expects too much of you and, and well they don't really know what it's like to serve God and, Come on. and they're into legalism and they're into that I, I challenge you to get in the word of God let's get in the word of God together and when you see that there's a problem bring it before us bring it before me don't just interrupt the church and say pastor you're preaching wrong uh, but Get with me and say, Pastor, what about this? And we'll study to show ourselves approved together. Amen. Amen. I, there was men that said.
since I've been here after pastoring three other churches. Amen. There was <clears throat> there was men, that young men that got saved and wanted me to baptize them. And because of where they had been, I didn't feel like I needed to baptize them. And, I mean, I don't know if I miss God to this day or not. But I told them to get in for a few days and be faithful and serve God and, and everything. And that's not, that's not really the New Testament way. The New Testament way, they got in, they professed, and they got baptized. But I've watched their life, and some of them have not walked that faithful walk that they could have walked. Come on. They didn't adhere to the admonition, the, the uh, uh, instruction that come from the pulpit. They didn't listen to it. I, it's not just that the preachers just, just staying home saying, how can I scramble their food today? But how can we be a blessing? God, why do I have this on my heart? And what do you want me to do with it? Help me, Lord. I need you. And I'm in that predicament again right now today. I need him. I need him, Brother Donovan. I need him to undergird me and help me and help me to obey him. Not overreact or underreact. Not be harsh. Not be too soft. But be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I don't know if God wants to bring uh, uh, chastening, if God wants to bring correction, instruction, uh, uh, reproof uh, with all along. It's all scriptural. What I need to do is find the heartbeat of God for you and for me and us and our families today. Father, God, I don't know how you could seek any more than I've sought. And I'm not saying nothing about me, Lord. I'm just saying with the frailty of this clay, God, I'm striving to be faithful. And I pray for you to help me, God, to be blunt and open pertaining my own life. God, where you want me to, and, and God, help me to please never say or do that that will confuse the people. Touch us, feed us today, manna from glory, Lord. Open the windows of heaven and pour out upon your people. God, what we need to help our families and our loved ones see you more clearly and surrender to you, I pray. Touch this service, every mind, will, and emotion, every spirit, bring it in subjection to you. And we'll give you all praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for being here and for having a heartbeat for the Lord. Am I thirsty? Amen. If any man thirst, amen. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. I know that God is wanting to do great things in our midst today. And I really do believe that God is wanting to deal with us and to show us that he is operating in our midst. Right. Even today. Even if there's disarray, even if there's confusion, God is not the author of confusion. Even if there's disarray, God is not the order of, author of disarray. That's pretty much like confusion. But God is a God of love. He's a God, amen, that's faithful. And he's wanting to deal with you and I today the things that we need that will help us be faithful to him. Amen. But we've got to be sensitive. I was reading in the book of St. John, chapter 1, verse 18. It says, No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. And that previous verse, verse 17, says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Yes, and of His fullness have we all received in grace for grace. John bear witness of him and cried, See, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Jesus said he wanted us to yield to the Spirit of God. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given. We know that Pentecost was not going to take place for, for 50 days after the Lord's uh, sacrificial offering and everything. And I, I don't know the exact day of all that, but I do know one thing.
mistake. Yep. But that don't make me a false prophet. No. If I've come to you and told you anything that God told me to tell you or told you to set your house in order, God's fixing to take you home or yada, 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 a lot of things. All right. And that don't come to pass. That makes a false prophet. But if I'm fearing God with all my heart and I'm walking with God as much as I know how, I'm studying to show myself approved unto the Lord to be faithful to Him and I'm trying to please Him. And I don't know why I'm saying all this. I'm trying to let you know in these last days, you need to be getting ready. Things are going to get worse and worse. It's going to be harder and harder, amen, for you and I to hear the heartbeat of God and to be ministered to. There's a lot of people that are expecting a great, great, great revelation and a great, great, great revival and just thrones and, and just multitudes and multitudes are going to come to God. And I do believe multitudes of people are going to come to the Lord after the tribulation, but I believe it's mostly going to be the Jewish people coming to God. But I do want you to know, regardless of whether I'm right or wrong there, it's just a belief. I believe but I do want you to know I'm asking you a question today. Are you going to be upset and offended and hurting somebody regardless of who or what it is? Amen. Are you going to see the door close and say, they'll never be blessed in this church? I mean, just, just several times over the years, we've had people say, Lord God, God sent me here. Then stand up and weep and cry in church. You don't know what you've got here. I mean, we've got the Spirit of God here. I can feel God moving here. And God was moving here. And God was doing great things. And brother, when I come by, I can come by and pray for somebody. And I'm telling you, I can do that right there. And it'd be like just God pouncing on them with a soul pillow. And God touching them and ministering to them. Amen. But now, I'm the same individual. I'm serving God in the same and the same faithfulness to God that I was then. Amen. Yes, sir. But the hour is a lot different. Yes, sir. Disciple, disciples, uh, prophets, so to speak, that claim to be prophets. I know I can start calling names right now. There's preachers, throngs of them, great men that I admire. I've still got their books and their, their, their teaching sessions and, and everything. That after their demise, after their decease, great things begin to be expanded and known to where immediately in a few days there were, his own family began to share and was broken hearted. But I'm going to tell you what, the gospel that he was preaching was still from the Bible. Yeah. It was still true, even though he wasn't faithful in the latter end, apparently. That's not for me to decide. But I do want you to know I do have to decide about me. And the only way I can decide about me is to realize that me don't know Diddy. You remember that old saying, Bo don't know Diddy? He may be an all star basketball, baseball, football player and be in the top 10 in all of them. But when it comes to serving God, the Bible says, let every man work out his own salvation. Brother, I'm telling you, I went yesterday uh, up here to Taco Casa to eat, and that lady that I was talking about, I saw her over at Chicken Express, and I've seen her dozens of, dozens, maybe hundreds of times over the years walking up and down Cooper Street, and I felt led as I was leaving to go over and talk to her, and I spent about 20 minutes with her, and she teared up, and, and God ministered to her, and she opened up and shared, and asked me to please be praying, and I said, do you mind if we pray now, and I pray now, and I'm telling you, we felt the glory of God. Yes. What's the difference in there and here? In my earlier years, in most of my ministry, it seems like you have the greatest struggles out there, not in here. Right. In here is supposed to be an oasis, the umbrella of the Holy Ghost, brother. Remember that angel that, that, that walks through the candlestick. Amen. 
decide that for yourself. You're the only one, you and God. I can look yes. at your expressions. I can look at your actions and attitudes, and I can judge you the way I think. But I've thought wrong on many, many, many times. And God don't want that. Amen. Amen. In 2 Peter 1 and 3, it says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Amen. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Amen. If these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his dead sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. You don't have to fail the Lord. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 10. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you. God says for us to confirm yes. our calling and election and make sure it's sure. Yes, sir. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He's talking about the body of Christ. Those that have professed the Lord Jesus Christ. He's here. He's not talking about those only that are just full of the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. He's talking about those that have made an open profession. They believe by faith the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. And they say, and I surrender. I, I repent. Amen. I believe. And brother, I want you to know there's a lot of people sitting in churches today that say they believe. Well, the devils believe too and tremble in fearfulness. That's right. Come on. If we believe, we've got to surrender yeah, to the will of God. Whatever it is that God's wanting you to do, you got to yes. do. Whatever it is that God's wanting you to be, you got to be willing to be. That's right. You can't determine in your heart, well, this is too straight or this is too hard or this is to this or to that or to the other. Brother, I want you to know, God is still working a work in all of us. He's working a work in me. This week we were having a yard sale trying to raise some funds to help uh, uh, one of our children, a man, be able to come for Thanksgiving. And uh, we were there, and there was a bunch of books that somebody had donated to the church. And I, I was walking by, and I really wasn't even going to be much of a partaker of it. Amen. I didn't really have the back to mess with it. I mean, it's Friday and Saturday and I need to have other things on my mind other than making 15 or 25 or 50 cents here and there. I just wasn't studying it. But I wanted to do my part and that's the way I prayed. And little did I know about the second or the third time that I walked through the fellowship hall at the house, I saw a book there in a box. And it was right on top. I didn't think a whole lot about it, but something just didn't look right. And if I remember right, it was a paperback. But I picked it up and began to read it. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. But I'm telling you, it was as pernicious as any ungodly thing that I probably ever read when I was out in sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. You say, well, Brother Jordan, you're just like a knight in shining armor. That just that rolled off you like water off a duck's bank. Not. There was a moment there that the appetite of the flesh began to resurface. It's like it began to be attracted to that fleshly lust and desire. I put that thing in the trash can and I got it quickly as I could in the presence of God. And brother, I tell you, I've been beating myself up about how far I even went. Amen. Ever since then, you say, 
well, you're the preacher. If you can't serve God faithfully, how do you expect us to? I don't. God does. Yes, sir. All right. That's right. How are you going to do it? You're going to do it by getting in the spirit and getting out of the flesh. Yes, sir. The flesh lusteth against the spirit. I thought I was okay, Sister Cindy. I thought I was not. I'm not saying think you stand lest you always fall. Look out, you know. But I really didn't think I would be bothered by anything. Not Come even on. in the same world. Come on. But there it was. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Listen. But look, Queen, that didn't bother me so much. It made me aggravated, to be honest. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But me being attracted to it. That bothered me. Pastor, you're not you're not fit to be behind the pulpit. You're right. You're right. Neither are you. Right. Right. There ain't but one that's been faithful to be behind the pulpit. Yeah, that's right. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me tell you what, when Peter got full of the Holy Ghost, I believe he could have been more victorious than I was being at the moment. What are you saying, brother? You don't know how much the flesh is growing in you. Right. You've got to be careful. Yes, sir. Don't let the devil dangle his daily in front of you and you think you're going to come out smelling like a rose and everything be all right. Yes. Come on. Yes. There's a lot of people, brother, that they take and they start skipping church because of this or that or the other. And today, many of them are out of church. That's true. I've known people. That let sports be their weakness. No oh, way. Beware. Yes, yes, sir. Beware. Right. Be careful. Why? Because God's working on us. Yes, sir. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, manliness, strength, maturity, yes, stability, yes. and to virtue knowledge. Yes. Oh, yes. Don't be a novice spiritually. Right. We're banking our eternity on it. Knowledge. We want to know what the Word of God says. We don't want to be novices. We don't want to just say, well, I was thinking I read that. I mean, it's humiliating how many things and how many times people correct me. Uh, well, that ain't even in the Bible. Lord, help us, Jesus. It's not that bad that they say that, but when you start doing the research and it's not in Strong's Concordance, you can't believe it. He missed it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And to faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, self-control, be in submission and surrenderance to the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, and to sir. temperance, patience, yes, sir. and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, love. Now listen to this eighth verse of the first chapter of Second Peter. For if these things be in you and abound, in other words, if you're not volatile, if you're not up today and down tomorrow, and you're not walking spiritually like this, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful yes, sir. in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Church, if we will spend more time praying for our loved ones. I know that uh, Brother Timothy and Sister Tressa had, I mean, so many in their family here week before last. And I even questioned myself, God, did I miss? I preached on repentance. And I thought that there was going to be a lot of different people. And there were several here. We have several here that are not regular church goers. But did I do it right? Did I say it right? Did I hear God right? Finally, the thought come to my mind, forgetting those things which are behind. Lord, I give it to you. I surrender. I did the best I knew how to do, Lord. I followed you as clearly as I could help and know how to follow you. Amen. I, no man that's walked with God very long is going to trust in the flesh anyway. Right. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of times that I'm making decisions. Yes, sir. And I really don't know as clearly if it's God's will. Not like I have at times in the past. Right. 
Brother, I'm telling you, sometimes it's just clear as it can be. But sometimes it's not. You just really don't know. Right. You just follow on to know the Lord. Be faithful as much as you know how. If any man thirsts, he says, let him come unto me and drink. Are you thirsty? Amen. Do you believe what the Word of God says? Do you believe God is able to change you? And God is able to change the desires of your loved one? Yeah. And God is able to save? Yeah. God is able to uh, help one to be uh, kept from being uh, stolen from and, and, and ministered to? I mean, what... Uh, uh, God works in the big things and in the little things. My wife uh, took my daughter, Danielle, to go... Uh, she got another apartment and, and her car got towed. And it was going to be $380. And my wife went to go get her and I just didn't feel like it. I mean, I was there. I was available sitting at the, at the table. But I mean, they just, I told her I didn't feel like I needed to go. And I just called my wife and said, you go. And, or can you go? And she said, I'd be glad to, baby. And, uh, but she went. And did you know God knew what he was doing? The devil thought he knew what he was doing. Yeah, right. The devil was beating me up. It's not very often that my daughter Daniel asked me for help. Mm -hmm. Daniel does not ask me for help very much. I'm the one that picked her name. Yeah. I picked her name Daniel because Daniel was able to stand alone yeah. in the lion's den. He was able to stand and be faithful, brother, against the, the wiles of the devil, against the imps of hell, against all to my wife going. My wife went and she started going and Daniel was talking and Daniel said, uh, you know, I paid that. And uh, she told me that. Uh, it's okay. I've still been heading to the impound. I've already taken two or three people to the impound. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not a great deal. They look almost with micro eagle eyes to catch you. Amen. Parked in the wrong spot or doing this wrong or whatever. And my wife said, well, baby, have you called the apartments and have you told them? I mean, she paid the, 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 the bill. She paid the place for the deal. They just didn't have it in the system yet or something. Mm -hmm. and she said, oh, mama, it's done. It's done. You know, it's there now. It's too late. She said, well, it won't hurt to call and she finally persuaded Danielle to call. And Danielle called, and she said it took about 10 minutes, I think she said. But that lady got on it and called, and did you know? They told her basically they'd have the car ready. Don't worry about it. Come pick it up. Sorry for the inconvenience. Cha-ching. Yeah, that seems to be what gets some of our attention. Yeah, yeah man. We on. get our rent lowered or get our... I'm telling you, I'm trying to help people make wise decisions. It's harder and harder and harder. You know why it's so hard? Because of them. No, not always. It is hard because of them, no doubt. But it's hard because, Brother Nick, it seems like I know so little anymore. And I'm not being modest. I'm being very sincere. Uh, the Bible says with much wisdom comes much sorrow. And I know I don't have a lot of wisdom. But brother, I got enough sorrow to be a wise, wise man. Right. We, meekness scares me. Like Moses, meek, the meekest man in all my life. Being unwise scares me. I can't tell you how often I whisper, God, lead me and guide me under my breath when somebody's saying, Brother Jordan or Pastor, or, can I ask you a question? Oh, God, help me. Okay. Help me, Lord. You don't know what to say. You don't even know the question yet. And the older I get, the more ready I am to give them the answer before I know the question. Right. So you know I need prayer. All right. Jesus is trying to speak to us. And the thought that kept going over and over in my mind, I just asked you, are you really thirsty? Are you really thirsty for more of God the way you used to be? Are you really thirsty, amen, for God to save you?
to where he turns you every which way but loose, to where he just puts the joy of the Lord about your countenance, to where everybody that encounters you, that knows you, can tell that you're radical and you're in love with Jesus? Amen. Or do you want that balance, that place to where, you know, you want people to know I love Jesus, but I don't want them to think I'm so radical that they look at me like I'm crazy. Right. It really don't matter how they look at us. No. That's right. It matters what God wants us Amen. to be. Amen. It matters how God wants them to look at us. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God is looking for a vessel that he can use. One that will follow him and be led by his spirit. But too many times we're making decisions, amen, led on what we want to do and what we don't want to do. What satisfies me? It don't matter what God might be trying to do in the lives of people that's looking on. It don't matter what God may be trying to do in other people's hearts and lives. You know, the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. <clears throat> I am confident that in the last two or three weeks, and if, it's, if I'm not right here, I really would wish you let me know. <clears throat> but everybody that come to church the last two or three weeks, I'm confident that every one of them should feel love coming from our church. Amen. They shouldn't feel judgmentalism. Mm -hmm. I, I know people know enough that it ain't nobody's place to start uh, cleaning the fruit and start paring it and canning it and, and putting it away for hard times. That's God's business yes, sir. in hearts and lives. Yes, sir. We got people here that's Smoked for years and years and years. And there's preachers that if they knew that, they'd say he's the sorriest excuse for a pastor there ever was. Yeah. They're not the pastor. Exactly. Come on. They're not going to stand before God for me. That's right. Come on. That's right. But I'm going to stand before yes. God for me. Yes, sir. Yes. And today there's victory. Praise God. There's victory. You know why? Because God knows what he's doing. That's right. Has yes. every one of them been victory? Been victory? The people that is yielded to God and hung on and not let go, yes. yes I've had Baptist preachers that pastored churches for 30 years, amen, that have smoked all the while and come, and I'm telling you, they were a blessing. And I tried to get them to take baptism after they said God was dealing with them. I tried to get them to pray and everything, but in their heart, they knew God wasn't pleased. You see, I told them you disobey God. But I found out it might have been that closed baptism to where Baptist will only have baptism with, or uh, not baptism, what is it? Uh, the in, the uh, communion. They'll only have communion with their own believers. You know what I mean? Their own body. And uh, I don't want to offend anybody. Right. But whether I offend anybody or not is irrelevant. That's right. What I better want to do, amen, is it Brother Roy? What I better want to do is to follow the dictates of God. Yes, sir. Get the mind of God and the word of God Amen. that his will can be accomplished, yes, that he can be pleased with me. Yes. You see, I really don't have a whole lot of power over you. But I need to have power over me. Yes, sir. And the only way I can have power over me is for me to be honest enough to know when me is wanting to do something that I know better. And if I'll be honest with God with that, God will keep me from messing up when I know better. And what's the Bible say? For him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Uh, we want to serve God, but I'm telling you, now I'm going to go in. And, uh, can you mute that? Uh,
And if we'll follow the Lord in fearfulness and in trembling, God will help us. You can turn it back on. Amen. He said, if any man, he didn't say if any of you men, sometimes you've got to be willing to stand alone. Yes, sir. Just make a tough decision. Make a tough decision. Why are you making it? Show me in the book. Sometimes you can't always show you in the book. But you can follow the leading of God. And let me tell you one way you know that it's closer to the will of God than when it's not. It's when the devil is fighting the harder All right. to get you to give up something that you think God don't want you to give up. Ooh. If he's fighting that hard, look out. Look out. God's wanting you to be used of God. Yeah. And if you're wanting to be used of God, I'm not saying God's going to make it more rigid for you or more rigid for me than he does you. But I am saying if you're going to serve God effectively, before God uses you, God is going to test you. Right. And a lot of times the test is not going to make sense. Whenever uh, Abraham began to go get ready to sacrifice Isaac, I don't believe that made a lot of sense to him. You say, well, oh, he knew and realized that this was typology and this was typifying the Lord going to uh, cruci be crucified. Now, I don't know if Abraham had all that figured out or not. But I do know Abraham trusted the Lord. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he passed the test. Yeah. Stuff. Amen. God help us, yes. God help us. The Bible says, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is speaking to us, what the Spirit is speaking to the churches. Yes. Amen. We've got to be faithful to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. We've got to be thirsty. We've got to be hungry for what God's will is for our life. Amen. 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 One guy said, and this is not original with me, well, as a matter of fact, I've changed a lot of this that was original. It's not even original anymore, and most of it since last night again. Yeah. But it says there are three degrees of a soul's first thirst for the divine. There's the pardon from God, so you can feel better. There's the thirst for purity, secondly. And then thirdly, there's the love relationship that you long for, for more and more of the Lord. These come in different stages in your life and walk. Remember me telling you when I first got saved, I just wanted a fire extinguisher. I just didn't want to go to hell. I didn't really care that much if I didn't get to go to hell. I just didn't want to go to hell. I never had a life suffering. You know, and, uh, but did you know when I got saved, it didn't take but a few minutes for me to start surrendering to God. The next yeah. day, I went to work. I was supplying a lot of those guys all kinds of stuff. And I went to work that night when I got home from church. I flushed it, got rid of it. Yes, How are you going to pay for that? I don't know, but it ain't spending the night here. Right, right. Yes, sir. But, brother, I'm telling you, it wasn't long until I was praying and fasting and seeking God and hungering for God to do what He wanted to do in me. January, February, March. Then I was here one night and God baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And God called me to preach. And I wish I could preach one-tenth like I did that night. And there wasn't nobody here but me. You say, Pastor, that's just your opinion. That's just what you think. No, brother. I've sensed the anointing. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. God was tearing Brother Charlie up. Chewing him up and spitting him out. Right, saying, what you going to be made of? You going to be made of what you want to be made of or you going to let me have my way? Right. Come on. Yes. Boy, it seemed like after I got the right there and everything, God filled me with the Holy Ghost, it's going to be easy from here on out. After about Come on. three or four months, Come on. me preaching, I'd have three pages of notes and preach six, eight, ten minutes. Daddy come to me not trying to hurt me, not trying to be facetious or mean, 
Well, not very sincere. You know how Brother Persinger felt about, about you know, lying. Charismatic people claim to be this. I got the, the gift of faith. And I've seen people. I've talked to people. I've read about people that have the gift of faith. I'm not saying that's not true. That's true. But not everybody that comes in that door there and wants to prophesy over your pastor has heard from God. Some of them may have. But you and I ought to know the difference in the ones that have and the ones that had not and the only way we're going to know that is to be led by the Spirit of God and let God have His way. Yes. Daddy come to me and he said, Son, he said, he said, you think maybe God's calling you into a teaching ministry? You need me to interpret that for you, Sister Tressa? <laughs> Brother Person, he's a brave, precious man. If I've ever feared, loved, honored, and admired any human male on the planet, it's my stepdad. Brother Robert Persinger. The first time he whipped me. That's another story. <laughs> Which time of the first time? When he got through, I knew I had been whipped. I just dropped that dime in that coat machine. He said, no, don't put that dime in there. I went to pull it out. Tammy had slipped. I hit the coin return button. Nothing happened. What do you do? Go get the owner to open it up? I didn't know what to do. He looked at me. I looked at him. And I pulled the coke out. About five whippings later. You know why he's whipping me? Because he thought there was a possibility that I might have been lying. You know why there was a possibility he thought I might have been lying? Because he's seen a rebellion streak in me like that. But anyway, what he was saying in a nice, gentle, loving way is, son, I love you, but you can't preach your way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> he was right. Y'all have seen how right he was in the last few weeks at different services. But I'm asking you, one thing you need to know and realize, when I do that, when I'm like that, usually I realize it. And I beg for God to be merciful to me and help me. And don't let me flop like that anymore. Amen. God, please, if I'm proud, can you not humble me another way? But the accusers at work, yeah. and the accusers yeah. really worked. And I want you to know, when you get saved, after God has washed and cleansed and sanctified your life, pardon you, he begins to purify your heart, your thinking. You don't yield to stinking thinking, bad attitudes, and bad desires. And just because the devil whispers something in your ear about somebody, you don't listen to it. Come on. You rebuke it, and you get on your face before God and ask God to help that person, whoever they might be. And then you beg God more and more and more and more to help you to fall in love with him. Amen. And to be what he wants you to be. And let me tell you, a lot of times... I don't know why I'm putting this down, but over the last several months, weeks, whatever it is, I've seen several people that that uh, I think it was cows, and they would take and have the, the cow in the chute, and they would take their hoof and fold it back behind them, and they would take some kind of knife and start cutting it, and they're talking all the while, and they knew that there was infection. They knew that something was festering cut and they would cut and then they would say something about you're going to hear it and I never heard nothing. I don't know what they were talking about. You're going to hear but then all of a sudden they would cut again and you could begin to see just infection, just old dirty, nasty stuff and they would keep cutting and keep cutting and keep cutting and if there's something in you and me that God is wanting to use come on and we've got something festering in us. Yes, yes. Even if we're right. I mean, my stepdad, if he hadn't have been my stepdad, he wouldn't have beat me like that. Y'all didn't know him like I did. Yes, he would have. <laughs> He'd almost done it if it had been your kid, if he was responsible for it. Yeah. But he wouldn't have done it just off the bank. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, yes. uh, let's see, mom and dad had six kids. Six kids, right? 
How many of the six are serving God today? All six of them. All six of them. He didn't do it the way I'd have done it. I, I talk to people often. I'd say, you don't know how hard he is. You don't know how mean he is. I don't know what I said. I'm sure I can just imagine. But I'm going to tell you, let God give you some tough love. And you still love him and trust him. He let his son go to Calvary for you and me. Yes, sir. And he's not going to withhold any good thing from you. Yes. I'm telling you, there's no way. No, Sister Tressa, there's no way you love your kids any more than God does. And I'm telling you, they can find God right here. Yes. If you and I will get shut in with him in a secret yes. place, yes. walk in humility of heart, Lord, in fearfulness of God, God can save you. Yes. God can work. God can minister. Oh, but you don't know. God, God can do it. Yes, he can. God is just wanting us to pray for them to the point to where he can need and massage that heart. To where he can speak to them and then he's going to back away and let them decide and choose. But your part and my part is to love them. And what did God say? Uh, And if we do these things, we shall never fall. But he that lacketh, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. In other words, you hold on to God. God will give you your loved ones. Yes, okay. God will give you. I'm not saying he's going to give everyone. I don't know how God's going to do what he's going to do. But I've talked to people that, and read about people that said they prayed for somebody for 50 years and never had one ounce of encouragement. And then they would die and God would do it after the fact. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The main thing is that we yes. are not barren nor unfruitful. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things, it don't really give a promise to save your kids there, but uh, it, it'll come nearer getting them saved than it will you driving them to hell by loving them and having all these virtues that are ahead. Walk in fearfulness. Yes, sir. Keep priorities with God. Right. Let God call the shots in your life. Yeah. Just because you have a chance to really do something and aspire to something great. I'd rather see my brothers, I'd rather see my sons be in ministry than them be in president space. Sincerely. God help us. Anyway, once they got that stuff out of the hoofs of that, that cattle, uh, they began to amend and get better. God made them all right. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Amen. Amen. Are you going around the house singing, I want more of Jesus, more and more and more? I want more of his great love than I've ever had before. Or I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich, so full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I give him more of me. We're going to reap what we sow. Yes, we are. We've got to hold on after we've tried to sow faithfulness. We've got to be faithful. We've got to be pure. We've got to be trusting God. Continue to be thirsty. Amen. amen. Moses, after he come to the Lord, amen, God really used him. But I can't remember how long that the, the guy said it was that after that, in other words, he didn't just turn away from the burning bush and right away ask God to show me your glory. But it was years later he continued to grow in God. He continued to be used to the Lord. But there come a place that he said, God, show me your glory. In other words, I want to see you closer. I want to feel the heat of your love. 
Can you imagine John the Beloved laying his head on the bosom of Jesus in front of all them disciples, not being ashamed, no ill thoughts, just loving Jesus, just loving Jesus. Yes. And later on, and not too much later on, his disciple, let's say that was John the Baptist, I'm sorry, John the Baptist uh, sent his disciples and said, are you the Christ or do we look for another? But Jesus said of John the Baptist, not a greater that been born than any man. He said, how be it he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Forget the big eyes and little yous and get to the place to where you want to hear him say, oh, yes. thank, you, Jesus. thank you for being faithful. Thank you for trusting me. Yes, thank you for loving me. Yes. Amen. I believe that after God gets through with the discipline, we're going to be better. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would you stand this morning? Paul said that he must apprehend that for which he had been apprehended. And what that meant was God chased Paul until Paul surrendered. And then it came to a place when Paul surrendered that Paul got to a place he was chasing God. Amen. I want more of Jesus. Why was he able to do that? Because God was helping him to do it. God was helping him to do it. Oh, yes. The things of this earth, they grow strangely dim in light of God's glory and grace. And um, if you're here today and you feel like that you would be closer to God than you are as far as reaching forth and reaching out, but there's some apprehension or some reservation or some concern that you got that God may require more than you're really able to pay, please give that to God. No, God don't work that way. God is going to deal with your heart as you are able. Amen. But I'm telling you, God wants all of you. And the more you give the Lord, the more God is going to give back and bless you with. Bountifully. Amen? Father, you see the heart of each one that's here today. Lord, this has really been scattered, but I love you, Lord, and I want to please you. I thank you for your grace and mercy with me, Lord, and not letting go of me. Oh, God, how unworthy. God, how fickle I've been in the past, Lord. God, I praise you for your love. I praise you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for this church, God, and what you're trying to do through us and in us, Lord, and to us. I ask you to help us, Lord, today. Help us to draw near to you. Help us to seek you and hunger for you. And God, when we sense that we're down praying, telling you we love you, we feel so ashamed because we feel like it's maybe not even true. And even if it is true, we know it's not true the way it needs to be. Help us, Lord. Change us. Give us that love that we need for you and for what's right. Touch your people today. Help every one of us, God, to submit and surrender to you, Lord. I really do believe, God, that you're wanting to send people through these doors, God, for help, for salvation, God. Oh, use us. Let us be found worthy and faithful, Lord. Use us, Lord, for your glory. We pray, touch and minister to hearts and lives the encouragement that's needed, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here today needs special prayer or any particular need? Maybe you, you it may be unspoken. You may not want to share it, but you would uh, want us to pray with you. You may want to just show a hand or whatever. We'd be glad to pray. God save us. Oh, if you're not surrendered to the Lord, I ask you to pray a simple prayer. God, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Lord, help me to have a greater desire to be faithful. 
Help me to trust you, God, in the area that I'm doubting or worrying or fearful or not courageous or whatever. Help me, I pray. God, touch your people. Touch the hand or more that was raised today. The heart that God has a desire for more of you. I pray, God, that we'll submit and surrender to you and live really for you. 24-7, be devoted, God. Committed to you, Lord, with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We praise you, God, and we thank you. Let us realize we don't have to figure it all out. We've just got to be faithful and walk day by day by day. Trusting and obeying, believing you, God. Protect your people. Help every heart I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God sees. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with one another. Have a great afternoon. And uh, Brother Tom and my brother-in-law will be ministered tonight. And you just come expecting. It probably won't be a long service. He's got to be at work early in the morning. He's got to drive back to Oklahoma uh, after the service tonight. I found out. I know he'll try to obey God. He will not let that deter him. But anyway, come if you can. Amen. God bless you.